Hi, I'm Carl Haub, demographer at the uh, Population Reference Bureau in, in Washington. And we're going to start a series of videos on demographic issues and demography. Doesn't sound exciting? <laughs> Stick around and let's see. I think you'll find that uh, demographics and demography can be a lot of fun as well as really, really interesting. Big question is where to start? There are so many different aspects of demography and population growth and decline that we could look at that it wasn't easy to decide where to begin. But then it hit me, of course, the demographer's favorite plaything, his favorite graph, the population pyramid. Now here we see a population pyramid of the developing countries of the world. And those are in Africa, Asia, Latin America, and parts of Oceania. And that's what the United Nations calls developing countries. What is a pyramid? A pyramid is a bar graph. In a way, it's actually kind of a photograph of what a population looks like. On the left, we have males, and on the right, females. Uh, and these are by five-year age groups. Now, when we look at this, what's one thing you can tell about these countries' future just by looking at the pyramid? Take a second and think about that. If you said that this group of countries is going to grow, grow in size, you're right. And why is that? Because as we look at the base of the pyramid, we see how wide it is. So every five years, a larger and larger group move up the ladder and eventually into the childbearing years where they have children of their own. So we can see that this particular group of countries is going to grow and probably grow pretty rapidly. Now let's look at the next pyramid. Doesn't exactly look like one, does it? Uh, this is the uh, pyramid, so to speak, of the developed countries. In other words, the other part of the world, what we might call the rich countries, the industrialized countries uh, of Europe and North America, along with Australia, Japan, and New Zealand. And when we look at these, what can we tell, comparing it to the pyramid we just saw before? Not much growth. Yes, that's right, of course. And we can see at the base of the pyramid that uh, that little group of zero to four is actually smaller than the groups above it. So in the future, the number of parents is going to get smaller and smaller and smaller. Now let's take a look at some individual countries. And this, this is where it gets really interesting. If we want to look at the, uh, at the past of a country and then look into which future. So here's a, a pyramid of Germany. And we can see in this particular pyramid, you know it's a little like reading tea leaves. You can just sort of look there and see all the things that have happened in the past. Uh, let's go back to that bottom bar again though, a zero to four age group, the young children who have been born in the last five years. And what do we see there? Again, we see the opposite of that pyramid of developing countries where zero to four is smaller than five to nine, the next bar up, and five to nine is smaller than 10 to 14. So what does that tell us about Germany's past, that the number of births has been shrinking? But what can it also tell us about its future? As these very small age groups themselves, once again, move up into the childbearing ages, the number of births in this country will go down even further. And now look at the very top bar, and what do we notice there? Take a look at that for a second. Notice how the bar on the right, the females, uh, ages 80 plus, is way bigger than the number of males who are 80 plus years of age. And why do you think that is? And yes, it's because uh, females do have better life expectancy. Females in general live longer than males do. Uh, females take better care of themselves. They go to the doctor when they're supposed to. Uh, so they tend to live longer. But that's not the real reason for the huge difference uh, in the size of those two bars, it's, which is very unusual. And of course, it's due to mortality of uh, soldiers during World War II and previous wars, which is why you have so few males. So when we say demography is destiny, a pyramid can show it to us better than almost anything. Now there's something else too that this pyramid can tell us about Germany's future and the future of any country with very low fertility. 
In Germany, women, women only average about 1.4 children in their lifetime. Uh, we could compare that to the U.S., where women average slightly over two. Uh, 1.4 means that couples are not replacing themselves with two children, so the population declines. But when we look at the middle of that pyramid, what's going to happen to the age structure, to the age structure of Germany once that large group reaches the retirement ages? Uh, we are going to see something that has never ever happened in human history. Close to 40 percent, maybe more, of the population will be in the retired ages. Uh, and this is a matter today that is of great concern to the countries with very low fertility and many are trying to figure out how to raise the birth rate so when these large groups who were born 20 some years ago reach retirement that there will be workers there to support them. Finally let's go back since we've been looking at pyramids that aren't pyramids let's go back and look at one that is. Uh, and here's Uganda, African country where women average almost seven children each. And here we see a perfectly symmetrical pyramid getting bigger and bigger and bigger at the bottom. Now as, that, as those bottom bars move up uh, into the ages where couples begin to have children, uh, what happens to the population of Uganda? Well, for one thing, it depends on how many children they have. If they continue to have almost seven children, Uganda will grow and really begin to resemble what we uh, frequently call a kind of a population explosion. And you know also in the case of Uganda, and it's a good example, there's a great deal said lately about a youth dividend, a youth bulge, a demographic dividend, uh, meaning that when you get a large number of younger people in the labor force, especially if the birth rate went down and there's fewer people, say below, below the age of 15, that this will be a great economic benefit because you know you'll have so many workers mm -hmm. uh, as a proportion of the population. But the fact is, if when those young people move into the labor force ages, if there's no economic opportunity for them, if they don't have training, if they don't have education, if there are no jobs, uh, there really is no advantage to having a large number of unprepared workers in an unprepared economy. Now, of course, if couples in the future in Uganda have uh, less children if they, let's say, have three rather than almost seven, we'll see a slower population growth. But when we look at, at Uganda, we see what almost looks like an age distribution of a kind of a rocket ship ready to take off. It is so young. And so once again, we can see that demography is destiny, and that a pyramid can tell us a great deal about a country's past, but I think even more importantly about its future.